the grandmother of Strive Masiwa made a statement. She said, our problems are over because the people we sent to school have come back. And when I listen to that statement, what I see from it is that the school is meant to be a place where people are transformed into solution. Meaning that when we send people to school, they are meant to go there and come back as solutions to the issues we have. But when we look at our own society, and we want to make the same statement, but we'll think of it. When they go to school, do they really come back as solutions? Or do they come back as more problems to us? I am a teacher, and I began teaching in 2003. So I've taught in some private schools. But my real baptism into the teaching profession came during my youth service in 2010, when I was posted to serve in Government Technical College, Transamadi in Port Harcourt. In that school, my experience was very horrible. I said horrible because I was teaching a class which was meant to take at least 50 students, or at most 50 students, but in each class, I had 240 registered children in the class. So when I go to class to teach, you just have to stand where you are standing. You can't move because children are sitting everywhere on the desks, on the floor. Several of them are still outside and some are not in school. They won't come. And there are teachers in that school. The children are supposed to take at least eight subjects in a day those teachers will not come to class. So some days, the students will come to school and they will spend the whole day, they won't learn anything. Some days they will learn one subject or two. That's a school. And that same school, you know, a, a school that does not have power supply or water supply, that's the place where our children go to learn. And then you'll be surprised. The other programs that make school interesting, like sports, other co-curricular activities are not existent in the school. Now you see my practice as a system because the school system is not really teaching the children. They also help to organize, you know, to help them rig the system and just get away. When they're supposed to write exams, to pass those exams, they help them to make arrangements that will cheat the system and get out of it without really doing the work they're supposed to do, they were supposed to do it. Now, this issue resonates with my experience also when I was younger, because I went partly to a public school, did my JS1 and JS2 in a government school, and finished up in a private school. My experience in the public school was a bit different, because I, I remember in my JS2, we had one basic technology teacher for the whole junior classes, that is JS1, JS2, JS3, of 30 classes. So when the man comes to your class two times in a term, you are very lucky. And that was the kind of experience we had until I was changed to a different school, which was private. When I got there, even though it was a small school, but the attitude to work there was different. The teachers were always there as most times, and learning was really taking place. So I began to think that what could be responsible for the difference. Now, with this type of education I just described to you, what it means is that we are just programming our future to fail. And you say, why do I say that? There are private schools everywhere to take care of our educational needs. But let me just let you know that according to the Nigeria Education Indicators published by Ministry of Education 2017, the records have is that in River State, out of five children in school, four of them are in public school. Only one is in a private school. You'll be surprised. Are there not private schools everywhere? But for each child you find in a private school, there are four of them in public school. The records has is that we have about 500,000 children in River State in secondary and primary schools. 
out of this 500,000, 100,000 are in the private school. The remaining 400,000 are in public schools. So the same thing goes for the nation. Out of six children in schools, only one is in a private school. The remaining five are in a public school. What this means is that the larger population of our future are going through a system that is not giving them what they need. And if this is the situation we find ourselves in, what is the future going to be like? Now, it's critical at this point that we reframe our solution so that we are going to design you know, a solution that is native to find a way to be able to solve the problem we find ourselves in. Um, I remember exactly on April 16, 2018, Strive Masiyiwa wrote on his Facebook page, said that you and your colleagues should identify a problem in your community and try to provide solution to it. And then he now says something. He says, and when you are providing your solution, please don't say government should. Because if you mention that, that means that that problem may remain there forever. It may never go away. So what it means is that you should design a local solution that you could use to solve that problem. I took it personal, and I began to think of what I will do. And the things that come to my mind readily is education, because I'm a teacher. I thought of what could I do for education. And I found out that we think that private schools can take care of the issues we have. But from what we see, they don't have the capacity yet because we have a large number of children to be taken care of. And then we came up with a design which we call education in my city. Because from our study, we discovered that, or from participation also, that the major issues with quality assurance in public schools is stakeholder participation. I'll just paint a picture. If I have a child in a private school and I've paid the school fees, I'm always on the school to ensure that they give me value for my money. For instance, I've been a head teacher of a private school in Portacot, Champions of Faith Academy, for the past four years. I receive calls even on Sundays from parents. They call you on Saturdays, they call you in the night, they call every time. They are, they are on you. They want to be sure that what they are paying for, they are getting it. But in the public sector, it's not like that. And we discover that if there is enough participation of stakeholders in these public schools, the quality of what we are getting from them will be different. So what, we are, what we've designed called Education in My City is simply to help increase the participation of stakeholders. And what it means is that you and I are going to be the one as a community, because that was what has always been in the olden days, when the people in the, of the community are interested in what is going on in the school because they know that the school is training their children. So irrespective of whether I have a child in that particular school or not, I will participate in making sure that that school is, you know, is doing well. So Education in My City is a platform that connects volunteers to schools to help improve the quality of education they offer. And we do this by getting the volunteers to commit to visit the schools once in a while, maybe once in a month, to observe what is happening and ask questions and see around. And then once every month also, we come together to have a meeting called Stakeholders Forum. So people in the community will participate in you know, observing what goes on in the school. Then when it's time to discuss it in the Stakeholders Forum, we come together, sit down, talk about these issues observed, talk about what solution can we offer to these things and talk about if maybe if there are some issues that we can address, we'll find a way to crowdsource and you know address them. If there are things that need us to put a pressure on the government, we'll do that collectively. If there are things that need us to talk to the administration of the school, we'll also be able to do that. But what is important is that all of us get to participate in making sure that the schools in our community, the public schools, are doing what they are supposed to do. In that, in that way, we are showing commitments, and that way, we are participating in making these schools better. So by visiting these schools, and by taking part in the Stakeholders Forum, 
we are making the schools better place. Another way we can also participate is that we can also act as guest instructors. Now, the platform enables you, a person that has indicated interest, to, you know, after you have gone through some screening and, you know, um, certified that you're able to do the work, to commit time to give these children some form of knowledge. In, you know, I mean, the, in the form of extra classes after school hours or whenever is convenient, but it's always it's going to be structured. And then another way also is that the design has a plan to set up what we call STEM centers. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Because from uh, experience also, we see that these schools, the children just go to school and learn, but they don't have practical experience of these things. So imagine a school where the children are learning computer and there is no computer in the school, not one. Not even the principal's office has a computer. So, but instead of setting up computer labs in each school, which may be costly and may not be very easy to achieve, from this design, we set up a community STEM center, which can serve up to three, four, or five schools around, so that children from each of these schools can go to the center to be instructed. So we have volunteers also who are going to act as demonstrators who will be at these STEM centers helping the children to you know, have a practical experience of the things they are learning in school. Now with this design by Education in My City, we believe that we are going to be able to you know, make a contribution that is going to be meaningful and will help to improve the quality of public education in our community. Thank you very much.